Good afternoon. One in three of us in this room will be diagnosed with cancer in our lifetimes. But in order to diagnose cancer, the person must see it. Last year, Google demonstrated an augmented reality microscope. Built upon artificial neural networks, this tool is designed to automatically identify aberrant lesions in patient tissue. We can imagine how this type of tool can rapidly accelerate the rate at which decisions are made, and ultimately, the rate at which care is delivered to a patient. The images you see under this microscope are stained with hematoxin and eosin. These pink and purple stains are virtually ubiquitous in medicine. They're fast, cheap, and easy to produce, and for these reasons form bedrock of <coughs> medical imaging. This is in contrast to immunofluorescence. This is an emerging technology, highly specific to molecular level, highly informative. However, it's extremely expensive to generate, as well as time consuming, requiring specialized microscopes and chemical reagents. Our team has developed an artificial intelligence system designed to see the immunofluorescence image directly from this cheap, H and E image and can generate these images thousands of times faster than it cost measured in cents. So we're uh, developing this tool that essentially will allow pathologists to visualize and evaluate the H and E stained tissue slides as they're normally used to, but with a push of a button, provide uh, virtual images of their biomarkers of interest as they're distributed through that same tissue. So here we have an example of a virtual nuclear uh, stain, a virtual tumor stain, or a virtual structural stain, combination of stains. And all, of the, all of this virtual information can help um, augment a pathologist's interpretation of the h &E stain tissue in real time. And of course, you can go back and look at the regular h &E stain image. And uh, with, with this, this tool, we're able to achieve up to 95% pixel-wise accuracy um, on the tumor, the tumor prediction. So here we have the um, real h &E image, the corresponding real immunofluorescence image, and images that we've generated with our tool. So our target market for this tool are uh, diagnostic labs, of which there are around 17,000 in the United States today. If we consider just the Mayo Clinic's immunostains lab alone, uh, that market is worth $30 million a year. Uh, the global market, um, if we look to the global market, is valued at around $2 billion by 2023. Um, we're trying to rise to uh, meet this growing demand for this technology by publishing the work. Like we published one paper in uh, the academic literature, we filed a, provision, a provisional uh, patent application, um, we found funding through the Biomedical Innovation Program at OHSU, and we're connected with the Night Diagnostic Lab. And I'll close with a thought from the chief medical officer of the Night Diagnostic Lab, who, when he saw our tool, he immediately noticed that he could take a single slide and use our tool to say these are the tumor cells and he doesn't have to look at it. It would save him a tremendous amount of time and money. Uh, so our team is headquartered at OHSU's Computational Biology Program, and uh, uh, with our experience in uh, machine learning, biomedical engineering, and pathology, uh, we're poised to help bring this state-of-the-art image analytics uh, to, to the market. So with that, thank you. Questions. How are you getting access to the images to train the data set, and uh, are there any sort of uh, typical models of building a data set to really get to the level of accuracy that you're seeing? Yes, we primarily, um, through our partnership with Night Diagnostic Lab, we've been getting images from um, either the OHSU's bio library um, or from uh, uh, ongoing research projects through the Brennan Colson uh, Pancreatic Cancer uh, Research Center. Um, so we're still we're still evaluating um, uh, the extent to which uh, we'll, we'll be able to use a model trained on images that are OHSU property essentially to deploy somewhere else. So that's something that we're we're looking into right now. Uh, what was the pricing? So what, what was it you saw? So the model itself generating these images, um, traditionally the immunofluorescence technology, including a scope, which is going to be about a quarter million dollars, it's, it's between five and ten thousand dollars per image generation with, with chemical technology. Our technology requires the use of a GPU computer that's connected to a server, which we have access to. Um, roughly back the envelope would cost about 70 cents to, to run. So in, uh, is this delivered through the, you know, in the reticle scope, or is it delivered through the PAC system of the, uh, of the clinician? Yeah, excellent question. Uh, I encourage everyone to come to our booth tomorrow. Uh, it's, a, it's a really exciting area of thought. How do you take this and how do you deploy this most efficiently? 
we're exploring a number of um, mobile technologies as well as virtualized technologies and virtual reality to explore how we can best provide this service. Um, what ultimately, what's that? What are your customers saying? Well, uh, Chris Corliss, um, who's, who's again, he's a thought leader in the field, uh, has, has shared significant excitement for being able to deploy something like this very quickly and very rapidly to make a first evaluation. Uh, you know, obviously, it's always in everyone's best interest to generate the real image, but as I can take a number of days and certainly um, thousands of dollars, we see a lot of opportunity in emerging markets um, where this technology currently isn't available. And in a way, leapfrogging the chemical immunofluorescence and into digital fluorescence. Uh, quick, uh, FDA, so do you have to get it, or if you don't have to get it, do you want to get it so you can make better claims? Yeah, we've done a little bit of ex exploration into um, potential device and, and diagnostic avenues for, for how we might be able to bring this to market. We currently um, think, although we, we don't know for sure, that we can likely um, push this through a, a diagnostic device track through the uh -huh. FDA. Um, there are There is market precedent that we intend to follow. Yeah, um, there's some, some groups that have worked on automated um, retinopathy detection, and they've gone through this de novo 510K pathway. Um, so there, there's precedent there for a similar technology. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.